So we put new, this is new, our new main race here. So let's heat the casing up, press that out, press the new one in. Uh, so we've got new oil seal. If you're putting an oil seal in one of these, only ever do it flush to the casing. It will go in further. You can push it in a lot further than that. Yeah. But just do it flush with the casing, because otherwise, when you go to set up your main shaft end float, which is that one, which sits on that brass there, yeah? So that adjusts your end float. If you get that too far in, your end float adjustment shim washers are too big. Yeah. So you just push that in so it's flush with that face, yeah? Right, so first thing to go in is that. And we'll load up our bearings. Layer of grease to hold the bearings. This has been in and out a few times this morning. I'll just put that on the lathe and just, just with a bit of 120 grit. Just, just, it was very, very, very slightly tight. So you just take the sheen off of it with a bit of sandpaper in the lathe and it'll just free it up. It, it's not a lot, but it, it might just be enough, you know. You wipe your bearing face, put grease on it and clean all your bearings on a clean bit of paper before you put them back in. Yeah. Because one little bit of grit can make a difference. 40 of these. Make sure you put 40 in. Don't put 39 in. You won't get 41 in there, but don't leave it at 39. Because then the bearings can, what they call it, they bunch up. If you've got a space in there. So you need to make sure the correct amount are in there. Like I say, this is just assembly now but yesterday was spent with the micrometer shimming everything oh. fun times yeah only took about 15 goes <laughs> yeah like I was saying I mean these if you get the right amount of bearings in there right, those other guys when they built this they must have forced that third gear in there. There's no other way you can get it that tight that it's going to smudge the bearings. Do you know what I mean? And the last one normally is a bit of a push fit because the angles or the bearings that have gone in. rotating nicely okay so when you put this in you can't feed that in through there because that that sits on there but you can't put that on there because it hits this your second gear retaining bar so you have to hang that in there on the far side of that then feed that through yeah And how should it feel when it's in right? You know it's right. If you look, it will always be tighter when you're pushing it through. But you see those needle rollers there? And when I turn it, see the rollers are going round? Yeah, yeah. If they're solid and that's just skidding around on the inside of it, it's too tight. Yeah. Which it must have been what it was doing before. But as long as they're rotating like that. Yeah. Yeah? Nice. You're okay. So then you've got to keep wiggling it, pushing it, wiggling it, pushing it, and it will come past the oil seal. There is a tool for doing it, but if you just keep turning it like that, you're okay. And then what I normally do is give it a quick squirt, push it back out a bit, just to take some of the grease out, because remember this should only run in oil. Grease is an actual, it will compact it and make it tighter. Okay. So just give it a little squirt with some freeing. There you go, that's freed that up, and then a bit of oil. See the difference? Push it past your oil seat. Ow, again. Yeah, that's got it. See the difference in that? Okay, so remember how loose that was? Yeah. That's got a slight bit, but hardly anything. So you know that's good. Right, this has all been shimmed up. 
all new washers either end so I know that's right it was a little bit tight so I put it on a lathe and just again I, I, I rubbed it just a little bit on the uh, with a turning tool and then just freed it up it was loose on that end but tight on this end so again tiny bit of 120 on it spin it up in the lathe if you haven't got a lathe you can do it by hand just make sure you try and keep it going round and round yeah so in the end of that we've got a new spring Hold your main shaft, oh, sorry, counter shaft out. And that is our kickstart quadrant. That only goes on one way, so you have to keep turning it till you find it. There you go. That only goes on one way, yeah? Yeah. Bit of a fiddle. Get it past that gear there, and then it will slide back in, yeah? Line it up with that. Whilst wiggling and turning everything. and that's in there so then you turn the kickstart to your upright position and that's holding it off the kickstart pull so you should then be able to turn that freely like that yeah okay right so that's all in the next thing is your main shaft again we've got new washers on this so you have a spacer washer there okay on that end and you take the rest of your washers off now second gear uh, which way does it go that goes on last okay so that one's next so that goes on there but you need to put your selector dog on first You've got one, two of those, yeah? If you look at your shaft, large, small, large, small. Can only go on one way. Yeah. Okay, so that, you know, has got to link into there. So he goes on there. That's your shim washer, which is a standard piece that fits in there, yeah? So he goes on there. he goes on there like that right and in between second and first gear you have an adjustable shim washer these come in all different lengths different thicknesses i should say sorry see that so they, that's got a slight recess in it bit of grease on it hold it in there and make sure that, that stays together because that's actually see that's your bearing size okay so you can put that on there first but that's flapping up and down yeah. so you've got to make sure it's seated in <clears> that very slight groove yeah and held in with a bit of grease i'll put a bit more on that i think it's only a smear but it just holds it in there then you know you're locating in the right place so he goes on there like that if you i mean you shouldn't have much of a gap there if it looks too big that wash has probably dropped off and is in the wrong place yeah you need to make sure that remains in the right place so then you have a drive dog goes on can only go one way if you look at it so you've got big large bits in there that won't physically go in the hole turn him round that will physically locate first gear yeah and that side there goes across and locates third gear right that's all been shimmed up for that's an adjustable one again for main shaft end float so he goes on there and that's it for that lot you just got to wiggle it in again that should all slide in on the cogs which it does nicely push him over there that's neutral him over there that's neutral so you should be able to turn it all yep so that's your engine running look well that's your rear wheel that's your engine running i can hold the rear wheel it's not turning so you know it's in neutral right now you've got a locating stud base there you want to make sure he's pushed on there properly yeah these are an absolute pig of a thing to get on um you can spend hours faffing around with these 
basically it's a bit of rubber so get it started and just push it on and it will just chew itself into where it wants to go okay um, it's not the best way of doing it obviously but they are a pain in the bum so a bit of grease on the inside and outside two ways of doing it you can either try and slide it over there first and then try and get that before it spreads to sit in that recess there and then you push it on which is normally the easiest way to do it nothing else to go in there at the moment and you just it'll end up going tight locking up like that Tap with a rubber mallet. Oh, I don't want to know. I'm going to try it the other way now. Which is slide him over there first. Oh, it's jammed up here. Let's come off the end of there. Relocate that. Just so come off its slider. That's it. Like I say, these, whichever way you do it, it will just literally compress into there and, and form your oil seal. So it's not the end of the world. Okay, five screws, two studs. When you're pre-assembling all this lot, you haven't got any location springs in there or anything like that. So it all ends up nice and loose and you can shim it all up nicely, you know. Draw the casing in evenly, that's tightening up now on that rubber, but as soon as it spins up it will just free itself up. If you look at where your gearbox all level is, it's right down here. So realistically that's pretty much a fail safe, that rubber. I mean yeah. you I have known people build them without them, but I, I tend, tend to try and get them in because it's literally and only a bit of rubber. It will break itself to down to where it doesn't matter, you know? It's got enough in there to seal it, so. Okay, so that's probably gone a bit tight on that because we've got these studs in. top ones because you need to put the outer cover on I'll put three big nuts on and that just lets you draw the top casing in square yeah because you need the outer cover on which is your clutch actuating arm and everything but that lets you pull that in Hell, that's locked up now. I don't know. So it's lowering it. Oh, that's too tight. Nip these up now. To make sure we've got square on the casing. What could be the reason for that being tight again? Now? It's probably that O-ring. Just enough to hold it off, you know. our end float on that so that's fine by the time that's bearinged up should have six thou down the side of that eight seven six so when you you adjust your end float on your main shaft which is that one yeah yeah and when you've done that that second gear washer that i said you have to sit in the recess which was in between that gear and that gear yeah mm -hmm. you then have to make sure you've got six thousandths of an inch down the side of that arm there the second gear retainer yeah, yeah. they're sort of like I, sixth hour but it's between four and seven or you know so you've got a little bit of leeway there yeah. so you want to make sure that they're all okay right and that's just locked up on that then yeah 
much too tight on that so let's come apart again and sort out that rubber on there because you know that all of that's turning okay and you've got end float which is a pain in the arse but there you go Bastard. Doesn't matter because when the end, when the cog goes on, the main drive cog, it holds it in there anyway, so. Probably have to do it with a socket. <laughs> we'll leave that like that then. Right, now we've got to measure, just double check your end float. Now the bearings, it always. If you don't put those bearings in it, it'll always feel like you've got more end float. Yeah. Because you think you're doing that in and out, but you're not. You're doing that. So you always check it with those in there. So we've got about five and a half roundabouts. Five. It's probably a thou over, which isn't going to make a shit's worth of difference on one of these, so that's fine. Yeah. Right, that's your main gearbox construction done. And we'll give her a little coat of oil. Okay. Right, so that's neutral, look. All spinning nicely. If you want first gear, uh, which one's first gear? It's that one. So that slides in. That's your first gear, yeah? So then when you move your tumbler, that takes that out of first gear, puts that into second gear. That's second gear, yeah? Out of second gear, and into third gear. So you have to, and that's third gear. So now we've got to put our new forks in build all that lot in and, and set all our fingers up 